Hey guys, Kevin here with eTrailer, and today we're going to be taking a look at eTrailer's line of replacement magnet kits for electric trailer brake assemblies. Each of these replacement brake magnets fit a specific brake assembly, so you are going to want to know exactly what size brake assembly that you have before you go ahead and purchase that replacement magnet. This specific one is designed for 10 inch brake assemblies, which are typically going to be on your 3,500 pound axles. So if you don't know exactly what size brake assembly you have, one good bet is to look at the capacity of your axle, and that will typically get you in the right direction of what your brake assembly is. Now typically this isn't a part that you would normally want to replace. Uh, essentially if this is kind of worn out, then your whole assembly is typically also worn out itself. Um, a, this would be a good time to take a look at your brake shoes, look at your pads, just see how worn in they are. In our case today, it wasn't an issue with the brake assembly because this is all brand new. It just happened to be just how they ran that wiring for that brake magnet at the factory, causing an issue where it was shorting out. To begin our installation, we'll have to get to our brake assembly. And to do that, we will first need to remove our wheel, which we've already gone ahead and done. Then we're going to pull out our pin and take our castle nut off. Then we can start working out our outer bearing. Usually if you just pull on that, that'll kind of give you enough pressure to pop it right off. Set that down on a nice clean towel and work the rest of our hub off. Taking a look at our brake magnet, we can see kind of where it failed. Uh, down here on the actual magnet itself, it's starting to flake off. Uh, you can see that it started to heat up and it really started tearing into the magnet. Uh, if we look at our wiring though, that's the major cause here. This was sitting here rubbing against our brake shoe and just eating up the wire. Then the wire was shortened and overheating. On the back, we're going to have this little clip. We're going to go ahead and just pop it off. Just kind of sit here and slowly work it out because we're going to have to reuse it. I'm just using a flathead screwdriver. And once we have that out, we can pop our wiring through. So I've gone ahead and I cut that wire and worked out our little gasket that we had there. I'm going to set that aside for now and now we're going to go ahead and just pop off these three clips and then the one that's inside of our brake magnet right here. And go ahead and just get that off real easy right there. these loose. Start pulling our wiring back. And we'll also remove this spring. So your new brake magnet is not going to come with these little clips that go along the brake shoe. So we're going to have to reuse those. And as you, as you can see with this one, they way, way over tighten that down. So it actually cut into the wire itself. So that could be another reason why this magnet failed. So we're going to just try and work our screwdriver in there and just pry it up a bit and get it off. On your spring, you're going to have a little portion where it's kind of bent down, got that 90 degree angle. That's what's going to clip into this little hole right here and hold this spring in place. So we're going to try to get that on here. So I'm going to take that back part, slip it through, popped right in, no problem for us. And we can go ahead and slip on our new brake magnet. Push that in a bit and we'll stick on our center clip. Now they do give you a new one with this kit. This is the only clip that you will get. So like I said, make sure you hold on to those other ones. And just push that in place. And that's gonna keep our magnet from being able to pop off. From there, we'll go ahead and we'll sneak our wiring back and just up around and replace our clips on. And I'm just going to put them in the same spot where we already had our clips and sneak our wiring out the back. Get rid of some of that excess. Go ahead and slip on one of our clips. And this time we're not going to go nearly as tight as the previous one just so that we don't have any issues. 
slightly squeeze that down just until it's kind of touching. We still want this to be able to move just a bit. Go ahead and tuck that in place and put our clip back on. And just keep repeating that process as we work our way back. I'm gonna go ahead and replace my gasket on here. Push that back in place. And then I'm gonna strip the casing back on this just a little bit because we're gonna use some heat shrink bug connectors to attach to our wires coming from our junction box. Put on some heat shrink bud connectors. Definitely recommend going with heat shrink just because these are gonna be out and exposed to the elements. You don't want a chance of any water getting in there and corroding it. And then your brake's not working. And it doesn't matter which wire you hook up to which. So we can go ahead and I'll probably just slip this top one in and crimp it down. And repeat that with our other wires. Shrink down our uh, heat shrink buck connectors. You can use a heat gun like I'm going to do today, or if you just had a lighter, you can go ahead and use that as well. Next, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of zip tie this up just a little bit. I'm going to leave enough so that when the axle kind of moves, you know, it's not going to get pinched on anything, but I also don't want it hanging too low or it's going to get caught on anything. Now that our brake's back in place, we can go ahead and reassemble our hub. Slip that on. We'll place on our outer bearing. And we can just use our castle nut to kind of drive in our outer bearing. We're just going to go until that's tight and then we'll back it off so that we can get our pin in place. Got no movement out of the hub. It's a little tight for just my hands, so we're gonna back that off just a bit. Right about there. Still no play, so now we can stick in our pin. And then we'll just bend that back in place. Then we go ahead and throw on our wheel. replace our lug nuts, and then the cap over our spindle. Well, I think that about does it for today's look at eTrailer's line of replacement magnet kits for electric trailer brake assemblies. My name's Kevin. Thanks for watching.